Manon Egmont is the director of tournaments for Edgar. When overseeing a championship, she meets the competitors as they sign in before the event and is constantly impressed with how these golfers with a range of disabilities prepare to take on the course and push themselves to the maximum. Some of the players first get to know her on competition day when they hand in their scorecards after aiming to break 70, 80 or 90, whatever their goal is, on the day. Manon's smile, ready laugh and calm manner in her work is in accord with how many of these players approach their own lives and their golf. Most embrace the fact that friendship and competition in playing this game can help with everyone's mental well-being and physical health. Back in 2012, when a doctor told the then 40-year-old Manon to be prepared that she might not live past the age of 60, it was a shock. But this doctor was looking at a clipboard full of statistics on her condition around a faulty gene, HLA-B27. While the person sitting opposite the well-intentioned doctor quickly focused on another target. For her own scorecard, Manon is highly focused on breaking 70, but going in an upward rather than downward direction. In fact, Manon is determined to break 80, with recent birdies on this scorecard being the blessed arrival of her two young sons, Sebastian in 2015 and Maxime in 2017. Meanwhile, she is thriving in her work for Edgar, where she is much liked and respected in the community of self-termed Golfers First, having been a volunteer for the not-for-profit organisation for more than a decade and now sitting on Edgar's board of directors in her tournament role. We asked her about her condition. I got a defect gen. It's pretty much that infect my blood. It's like an autoimmune disease and it takes the force out of my body every year a little bit more. And the more stress I got, the more functions stop. So if, um, uh, if I do too much or if I'm too stressed, um, I get sick, really sick. And um, I need chemotherapy to, to get over it, to get better, uh, or strong medication. And it makes me lose force in my hands, in my feet. Manon had first been diagnosed with this rare autoimmune condition around HLA hyphen B27 when aged 23. It can be distressing to live with. Complex, based around ankylung spondylitis. It can include arthritis and painful swelling in the spine, knees, other joints and the rest of the body. It can come and go as well, creating hope and frustration at every turn. That's a little bit the impairment I've got um, due to sports. I mean, pain is not a... That's, that's obvious, the, the thing that a lot of people uh, within the Edgar players have to deal with. But the, the thing that made me stop playing tennis was more the force that I start to lose. And that's, that's what's happening. How do I manage that? I think it's really a good routine, good food, rest a lot. Um, over the years, I started to really rely on my body, rely on um, knowing what my body can and cannot do and live, live like it. Really, if you know that you got a stressy day one day, enjoy that day the fullest because that's life. And then, you know, the two days after you're nothing. The moment you start to accept that, that's a really, that's a really gift if, if, if that hits you. If, if you really start to understand that system in your body when you've got an autoimmune disease, you can enjoy life so much. You just need to know. Maybe we, we even enjoy the day that we can more and more intensive because we know we can't have that every day. Manon grew up in the Netherlands in a close-knit, loving family who loved their sport. She describes her childhood as perfect. And six years ago, moved her family back to her first home area, just south of Rotterdam, in a place called Krimpen den Eysel, so her children could enjoy the same friendly surroundings in which she thrived. Golf runs in my family. My sister is a, a golf professional. My parents play golf as long as I can remember. 
My favorite sport was, to be honest, tennis. But when I got sick myself, I couldn't play tennis anymore. I didn't have the force in my hands anymore to get the balls. I didn't want to start playing golf, but it was pretty much the only sport left that I could do at that moment. So I started to play golf. Manon started to realize something was wrong with her body in her teens. I think it started when I was 16 years old. I was playing on a pretty high level of tennis. And I started to have uh, injuries on my feet and my, and my muscles and my, my, my bones and my feet. And at that time, doctors say, yeah, it's, you do too much. And I did because I was on the tennis court constantly. And they say with growing up and too much sport, it's, uh, it's, it's an effect that, that a lot of people got. But when I got older, I think 21, my whole leg started to be yellow. And that's when the doctor thought that's not a good sign. So that's when the first blood test came. And then they discovered that I, that I got the disease. So that's, uh, yeah, that was the start. And from there, they, they found out um, a lot of women in my family died really early. And they started to look at the gents. So and that's when they found out that we got a defect on there that affects all, uh, all this stuff. Relief was the emotion Manon felt when she was finally given a name for her condition and a diagnosis, despite it still being a puzzle for the doctors. The general doctor in the hospital told me, and uh, immediately it was like a puzzle, because I immediately heard from the sisters in the hospital what it meant and what it does with your body, and it immediately recognized so much that I thought, I finally got a name. I was already like six or seven years walking around with something and I didn't know what. And now it had a name. It, it doesn't have medication, but it, it had a name and all the symptoms, yeah, they were there. I, I, I immediately thought this is it. Well, I was happy that finally it was recognized because I knew I was sick. It's like a new chapter in a book. It's like you can close one and then start writing your new chapter only with a, a thought that you know what you got. So you can start living with the disease. And that's another chapter. That's another life. And from the first moment, I thought, okay, you can say I'm going to be 60, but I will show you 70 will be, <laughs> will be a good age for me at least. And I never looked back. I just thought about the opportunities and uh, we were so into life. We, uh, as you say, I just started a job at the bank and there were so many great opportunities there that I kind of forgot my disease for, I think, another 15 years till it came back. Manon had been told when first diagnosed that she wouldn't be able to have children. Despite this blow, she remained positive and threw herself into her studies and then jobs. In 1993, she started working at an international bank as the management assistant before becoming the international secretary for the director of global affairs. She had completed her international secretarial degree and could talk with customers and colleagues in a choice of Dutch, English, German and French. If children weren't an option, Manon is only half joking when saying she was determined to be businesswoman of the year. Fast forward to her 40s and she was working all hours in her career for the bank. And those long hours and weeks of pressure would take their toll, leading to her becoming very ill in 2010. One shining piece of brightness was that she happened to be pregnant with her soon-to-be-born son, Sebastian at the time, and thus the warning about her possibly not making 60 concentrated her mind. Supported by her husband, Frederick, she stopped taking medication, radically changed her diet and sought to have fun and enjoy more of an outdoor life. This all took a while to work, but this new philosophy, fused with the joy of bringing up now two boys when second son Maxine came along, are all part of a recipe that has transformed Manon's life, making her feel better, fitter and stronger. Her recipe has been completed by sprinkling in what she describes as the best job ever, her work for Edgar, having first found golf for the disabled at home in the Netherlands. 
at one point, I think it was 2006 or 2007, we had a Dutch Disabled Open and the organizer asked me to be a part of the team. And that's pretty much how my involvement started. And from there, I met Peter, Peter van Duin, our vice president. And two years later, he asked me to join ETCA. So that's a little bit how I got started. Manon talks fondly of all the people she's met through Edgar, fellow volunteers and staff, a community role that has given her immense satisfaction. She looks back happy with memories that saw her start as a volunteer in administration, paving the way in the last decade for her to take a lead role in the organising of tournaments, running a small dedicated team, but she smiles when she remembers those early days. Yeah, that's really amazing. When I started at I was already impressed, to be honest, because it already gave so many people with a disability the chance to play. It was smaller, of course, than what it is now, but it was there and it was developing and it was already uh, international. But this was more like a really big group of friends. There was an order of merit. I think the last seven years were like a train. And before that, I think everything before 2010 was really great and already impressive, but nothing to compare what is now. The Edgar Director of Tournaments role began for Manon in 2018. Around this time, Edgar put her forward and she was accepted for the RNA Women in Golf Leadership Programme, describing this as a real honour. And as she explains further, she was thrilled to be part of a group of dynamic women in a great learning experience. And today, she is registered as an RNA Women in Golf Leadership Coach. From the first sessions on, they, they really said, if you don't know yourself, you can't be a good leader. And I didn't know myself. I think somewhere down the line, I lost me. I did what everybody thought that I should do. And I think a lot of people do that automatically because that's just how society works. And somewhere down the line, you just forget about what you like and who you are exactly. Manon says the whole experience was hugely beneficial, assisting when starting to lead her team for Edgar and also helping set herself a better work-life balance, finding space to work on Edgar tournaments while enjoying time with her children. Manon credits Liz Hoffman, president of Golf Canada, who also has experience of bringing up a family with a career for her inspirational encouragement. And it gave me so much confidence that I'm on the right track now. So it makes it easier, it makes the life so much more joy and it makes me do my job so much better. While she enjoys all parts of her job, Manon recognises that everyone, not just in golf but in a wider society, has to do more to make life more inclusive for people with disability and to take away common prejudices. And that's hard to deal with because we are really seeing golfers first and then we see a disability and that's how the whole strategy works within ETCA. And that's what we always say to everybody new. We first see the people and then see the disability. As director of tournaments, Manon assists players with advice and practical support for the Edgar Badged events, either in person, by email or by phone. One of the main goals of the tournament team is to encourage tournament organisers to create more events at every level for golfers with disabilities, with or without a WR4GD pass, and to increase the opportunities for more individuals to participate and compete in Edgar Badge tournaments, along with national events for golfers with disability. Manon sees recognising differences at every level of the sport and society as the first step to genuine inclusivity. We are talking with her after a recent news of the DP World Tour back G4D Tour for leading golfers with disability, while Manon's day-to-day in 2022 will play a key role in the expansion of the Edgar Tour. More events for more players in more countries around the world. It's a hugely exciting proposition for Manon. While Golf for the Disabled grows internationally, it continues to throw up challenges for the Edgar team. But these are challenges that the team feel privileged to be involved with. I think the big puzzle pieces are there. I think the middle is already pretty solid. I think it's the side that we need to create and develop. And it's, it's not complete yet, 
but that's a good thing because then our work is done. So <laughs> I hope it will never be completed. <laughs> but I think the bigger we get or the bigger the goal for the disabled gets, it doesn't actually mean EDGA, but the bigger, the more players we're going to get, the bigger the puzzle will be. Manon stressed in our interview that she didn't want her life to be seen as a struggle, but more about how positive thinking can help you succeed throughout your life. She first loved tennis and was a slightly unwilling golfer when she entered the game. But now she loves the sport and loves working for Edgar and helping all of its players. Watching tennis and golf are a pleasure and her real joy is supporting Sebastien and Maxime as they play tennis and football. And her improved balance in life will sometimes see Manon with a paintbrush or a book in her hand when time allows. After our chat, in an email she added, I'm enjoying life so much. I am so proud to be a mother and the combination with Edgar makes my life absolutely perfect. Like so many of the players she meets on tournament day, Manon has adjusted to the tough times and focused on her passions. It's a winning combination. 